What's up guys and welcome back to Technique of the Week right here on Deco Creek TV. My name is Jeff and on today's episode we're going to be showing you guys the techniques needed for installing fiber optic lights in concrete countertops so stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So fiber optic lights are just a great way to spice things up and really add a wow factor in your concrete countertop projects. Now this is going to be pretty specific information and you know this isn't something you're going to do on every job but when you got somebody who's willing to pay the price man is this some cool stuff. So the things we're going to need for today's project is first of all uh, strands of fiber optics. I mean obviously we can't do it without this. Now this one we have here is pretty cool because it's what's known as a star pack. And if we look, um, you know, inside this black casing, what we can see is that we have, you know, a few different sizes in here. So that's just gonna create, you know, some that are bigger, smaller, just makes it look really cool. So we're also gonna need just a few uh, wiring uh, tools, like a utility knife, some electrical tape, a side cutter, a stripper, <laughs> a wire stripper, that is. Um, we're also gonna need, a, you know, just a tape measure, a Sharpie to do a few things. And then the big thing is these little drill bits right here. And this part is important because, you know, we need pretty small little drill bits and you can see how tiny some of these little things are. So this all depends on how big or small your fiber optic strands are. In this case, today we got some that are pretty small, so we're gonna need these little guys. So when we're using really small drill bits like this, it's also important to have a drill where the chuck goes all the way down to zero because if you get some of those ones that are just made for bigger bits they just won't clamp these little guys in there good enough it's not going to work uh, we're also going to need some zip ties by the time we're said and done you know we're going to leave as much of this casing on as we can but we're going to have to remove some of it and it's just nice to be able to just tie all these things back together so they're not just floating everywhere and we can be uh, nice and neat about this so the first thing we're going to do is is we're going to just lay out our pattern and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to measure across the the size of my table and I'm gonna just uh, break it up into quadrants. Now in this case, you know, uh, this thing's eight feet long. We can either split it in the center and just work on either side. You could also split this thing, you know, again, if you want. The whole point of this is that we need to split things up so we don't end up with all our fibers just in one area and then not have enough when we get to the end or vice versa. So all we're gonna do is split up our quadrants. We know that there's gonna be 48 strands in each of these uh, the two pieces we have here. And so I'm just gonna take my Sharpie and I'm just gonna start making random dots right on my surface. And you know, we already got this, this countertop all formed up with melamine. And if you're using, you know, a different casting surface, that's okay too. And for a full tutorial on how to build a mold like this out of melamine, please check out this episode right here. So now that I got all my dots uh, laid out, and again, at this point, I can change this anytime I want. You know, if I don't like the way this is looking, I can just take a little bit of acetone on a rag and I can wipe. That's why I like doing this with a Sharpie because I can just wipe it back off and get it the way I want it. But once I have everything laid out, just how it needs to be, all I need to do is just take my drill and I'm gonna start drilling uh, in each dot. And what I also like to do is uh, when you can, I like to drill all the way down through the casting surface as well as the casting table. That way we can push the fibers all the way through that hole and we can actually tape them off on the back side and that way they don't want to pull out as we're casting. So in this case, uh, you know, I have these, these two sp uh, strands that we're using here and our illuminator is going to be right in the center of this table. And that's important because uh, you really can't splice fiber optic strands together. And so we just need to make sure we have all this right uh, before we cast anything or we're going to end up having to redo this whole thing. So with this being right in the middle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually build this little jig here. You can see we got this thing all ready to go. We're just going to build this little jig that's going to, um, A, that's going to hold our, fi our fiber optic strands up out of the way so they're not down there where we're working at, but it's also going to make sure that those strands are where they need to be and they can meet up for the illuminator itself. So once we have all this built, then we can go ahead and just put our fibers in and we're going to strip this casing back, um, you know, all the way to the middle here. That way we got fibers to work with. And all we're gonna do is just gonna push them right down in those little holes we drilled. And then, you know, as we're going along and as these strands get shorter, you know, this one here has to be all the way to the end. But as I get back to the middle, they can be shorter and it's okay to just go ahead and clip them off so we have less wire to deal with. The whole thing is I'm just trying to be really nice and neat here so I don't have fibers just everywhere when I'm trying to cast this thing. So always be prepared when you're doing fiber optics like this in a countertop that we're always gonna lose a few of them as we go. And you know, we always just used to figure we're gonna lose about 10% of our fibers and that's a good number to roll with. So the, one of the really, really important things is to make sure that we have all the ends of our fiber optics 
all coming out of a central point. That way they can all get in, into the illuminator at the same time. So it looks like we got everything ready to go. All our fibers are in place. Our mold is all blown out, clean. All our fibers are tied together as neat as possible. And it's just time to start casting this thing. Now, if this, if you are doing GFRC in, uh, for a project like this, the easiest thing to do is go ahead and get your face coat in. You just have to work around all these little fibers and it is kind of tedious. And then, you know, you can get that first backer coat in and then that's the time when, you know, you can kind of start embedding these fibers in that first backer coat. That way they, they all stay down. They're not wanting to spring back up, you know, out of the backside. And then when we put our scrim down, that really does a nice job of holding these things, um, you know, underneath uh, the backside of our top and keeps them all nice in place. Now, if you're doing wet cast for this, honestly, the easiest way to go about this is to just go ahead and, and hang, just build up, um, you know, kind of like this little jig we've got here, but just build a few things like this so you can actually hang your wire mesh in there. And then we can just go ahead and zip tie these strands to the, the wire mesh itself. And then we can just kind of fill this up just like normal. So with fiber optic lights, you know, after this thing is cured and we flip it over, there is gonna be a little bit of work. Uh, the first thing we have to do is just take a, a bull nose side cut and we'll just clip all these uh, fibers off as flush as we can, you know, right down to the surface. And then this is gonna take a little bit of sanding and polishing just to get everything, you know, nice and flush. Maybe a little bit of a slurry coat um, might be required. And then just a final sand or a little bit of a polish just to make these fibers nice and bright on the top. Please leave us a comment if we missed anything or if you have any questions on on fiber optic lights in concrete countertops. If you guys are already subscribed, don't forget about that bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and it really helps our channel out. So from all of us here at Technique of the Week and DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.